Hey Sujin, just wanted to show you a few things about the car. Uh, I'm standing here in the garage, right before pickup. So, uh, the car's in really good shape. It's got a clear bra that is not the best job, but a decent clear bra job. Um, over um, the front uh, hood and fenders. Um, the top of the mirror is done. Yeah, not a great job. You can always replace that, but it's better than not having the film. Um, they did not do the back half of the car, but the the whole car looks like it's been detailed. Might even have been ceramic coated, although I don't see any uh, documentation for that. Um, so let's see, a couple things about the trunk. It's heavy. So when you receive the car, I just want to make sure that you've got uh, all the stuff. So what you'll see here is the, this is the Ferrari car cover. Um, I think there are some goodies inside here. There's uh, the battery, the case for the uh, battery charger, which I'm going to pack up right now. Um, and then it's a soft uh, cover for the car. There's also uh, the wind deflector and then the manuals. Um, if you look at the trunk, this big divider flips up, uh, gives you some more room, but in order to put the top down, you got to have the divider down. So, uh, books, um, the, one of the important things about, uh, Ferraris, uh, is that I think, let's see. So the car comes with uh, service included for the first seven years. So through 2021, you'll have an annual uh, maintenance that's available. Uh, it doesn't look like this actually got stamped in the book, but um, the warranty is all, the, the uh, warranty and the uh, maintenance is uh, detailed in, um, uh, is, has this little pamphlet, I think somewhere that I'll email you and try to find to pack up. Anyway, that's where the books are. The, it's a snap and a Velcro cover, so make sure that's there when you get the car. Um, the battery charger plugs into a dedicated port right here. Um, so you can see there's a little latch right here, and it plugs in facing this way here. Um, this cover, obviously pretty simple. Put the tab in, turn the thing horizontal, and then I'll keep it there. So battery charger. Gonna package this up and put it into the bag for you. Yeah, be careful with these battery chargers. They're unfortunately uh, expensive to replace and uh, proprietary to Ferrari there it's a C, it looks like a, it's actually a C tech charger but this connector is a non-standard connector so if you ever were to lose this they're like two or three hundred dollars on eBay so I'd recommend not losing it if you can avoid it plus it's nice to have for the uh, the next owner um, I think this clips in somewhere but I'm not exactly sure where but I'm just gonna stick it here in inside the uh, the bag for you uh, with the uh, car cover uh, in the trunk, there's also tools. Uh, I'm going to leave the license plates in here as well um, and the registration. So these are the plates um, and I'll stick that, I'll leave that under this cover. Um, and then this is the, uh, the car cover. Well, I guess I'm going to leave this up here and then close the divider over it so we can put the top down. Uh, the trunk closes, it's got soft close so you don't have to slam it just uh, bring it close and it'll retract itself down all right um, giving you two keys uh, so make sure you when you pick the car up from or when the guy drops the car off you get both keys Uh, let's get into the car. Oh, one thing to point out 
apologies on this. Um, there's a little bit of paint that got scratched off on the door. You can't really see it that much when it's closed. Might be good to touch that up someday, um, but it happened before I got the car. Anyhow, um, seats, uh, there's, a, there's a loop here you can clip the seat belt into if you want to. Um, the, you fold the seat this way, it motors forward so you can get into the back seat. Back seats are small. There are latch anchors um, below the uh, that flap that comes up um, for if you ever need to put a baby seat in the car. Um, there are is let's see on the side of the seat there is uh, controls for this back dial does the uh, seat bolsters um, so I can't remember which way does the side bolsters and then the uh, the Bolsters on the bottom of the seat, bolster on the top seat, but that's what this controls. There's seat heaters. Um, there's a little dial. This will also reflect in the uh, left side of the instrument cluster. And this is the lumbar support. Then you've got backrest adjustment, um, front of the seat, back of the seat, up and down, and slide back and forth. And then the three memory buttons just hold to hear a beep to uh, reset those. Okay, getting in the car. So when you key goes in the key goes in over here, should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you're ready to fire the car up, uh, the Ferrari actually does a uh, a systems check when you start it up. So I usually turn it on all the way. <laughs> and then um, let it go through the check. Wait till that finishes. Um, full tank of gas. Uh, it's got 32,284 32, miles on it right now. Um, and like I said earlier, the check engine light will stay on even after you start the, the engine and let it idle for a little bit, just is what it is. The uh, Manatino control right here so comfort mode is less aggressive uh, suspension, less aggressive um, shifts, and uh, the, uh, it stays in auto mode automatically. If you look at the instrument cluster, you, if you see the little down arrow, that means that it will quick switch out of automatic mode, which means if you pull one of the paddles, it'll automatically go into, um, into the manual mode and stay there. Uh, when you wanna start the motor, uh, foot on the brake, start button, you'll see the uh, that check engine light will stay on for a little bit and then shut off there we go the stereo uh, I mean it's pretty self-explanatory you have to accept each time um, for Bluetooth it does support Bluetooth streaming um, you have to uh, click on the device each time for it to do that there's a hard drive um, in the nav unit, there's also a CD player, should you, should you ever want that. Does have navigation. Uh, the navigation's eh, it's not great, it works. Um, and I believe it has satellite radio, although it doesn't have uh, satellite radio uh, set up right now. So the, the only uh, the car is right here on the head unit, um, which is a little bit of a pain to plug a phone in. You can if you'd like, but I usually just plugged it into uh, Mr. Cigarette Lighter here. Um, climate controls, uh, pretty standard. Mono, uh, you set temperature on just the driver's side and it uh, does it for the whole car. If you, if you turn the passenger side dial, it turns mono off, you can set a different temperature for the passenger side. Uh, other than that, the, also the uh, Manatino uh, controls the uh, exhaust valves as well so when you click it in the sport it gets uh, quite a bit louder uh, the one of the funky things about the car is that the horn buttons are not here this doesn't do anything I hit the horn a few times here and it didn't do anything the horn buttons are hard to see and on this bulge so just to let you know um, let's 
see. I don't think there's anything else that's funky. Um, the it took me a little while to find the uh, the gas and uh, trunk release buttons. They're down here. Uh, mirror control on the door, pretty standard. Lights, automatic. You can leave it there. Um, you can press this for uh, this button here for the rear fog light. Um, this is not for front fog lights. Just remember it'll turn on your brake lights and make you look a little silly. So I usually try to leave that off. Um, the, the display on this, this side is controlled by this menu. The mode button uh, changes whether you're showing the AB or total miles left or odometer uh, trip meter. And then the, this uh, up and down controls the uh, whatever on the screen. And then you scroll through it with the display button. And the display button will take you through the main gauges, the TPMS, the trip odometer, which you can, it's got, oops. Then you can press mode and show, or just kidding. A and B, and then the setup menu. The setup menu will only display when you are not moving. So if you ever want to change the time, the dimming, check out the service intervals, things like that, you can only do that while the car is uh, sitting still. So then to get into uh, one of these menus, just hit the mode button. Um, so it looks like it may actually be due for service. Uh, and, and the services are free, so if you want to schedule that, you can. Uh, and then there's setup menu, etc. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you when you're ready to move, the um, reverse is very easy to find. Uh, if you look at the center console, there are the three buttons here. Uh, R is reverse. PS stands for performance start, which is the launch control. And the auto button, if you click into manual mode and it's stuck in manual mode, um, it, this is what switches it back to automatic. Um, the, the car does vibrate a little bit at idle. Uh, I've been told that all the, the Californians of this generation do that. Um, it's normal and smooths out once you actually start moving. Uh, and away we go. So we'll hit reverse. Uh, it does have a reverse camera. And I'm just gonna take the car out, warm it up a little bit, and come back. So when you're ready to go forward, one of the things that uh, screwed me up at first was uh, there is no drive button. You just uh, click the car uh, into gear with the paddle, uh, and away you go. So you can start driving. Uh, you can see in the instrument display, uh, there's the two and three in auto mode, but it's got the, uh, the down arrow, which indicates that if you uh, shift with the manual paddles, it will uh, automatically go into manual mode and not shift for you. So uh, that uh, tripped me up a few times when I expected it to go back into uh, automatic mode after uh, using the paddles like BMWs do, but that's not the way uh, this car works. The car now, everything's all warmed up. Um, did want to point out a couple of uh, other things that I forgot. The There's a little chip right here. Uh, other than that, the interior is in pretty good shape. The steering wheel is clean and free of uh, nastiness. Pretty much every surface in this car is leather, so when you clean it, um, use a, a leather cleaner. Um, and uh, I, think, I think that's the only thing you need to know uh, about the interior. Uh, windshield wipers are standard uh, sensitivity and then the squirt is on the side. Um, cruise control is on this stock along with the blinkers. Uh, there is home link uh, at the bottom of the mirror. Um, this took me a little while to figure out. The lock and unlock button is right here, uh, which I wasn't expecting. And then um, there is the parking sensor disable here. And uh, yeah, you can see the status of the passenger side airbag. Okay, back again, just doing a quick walk around. Uh, apologies, got the car filthy driving it around just now, but 
Uh, the car is in pretty much perfect shape. You can see there's no uh, issues with the wheels, no scrapes, no uh, dents or dings, or anything like that. Uh, no curb rash on the wheels. Uh, there's a decent amount of traction. I think the front tires were replaced and the rears are original, so you may keep an eye on the rears. But I mean, overall, the car is in uh, very good shape. Um, like I said, there's clear bra on the, uh, you can see the seams right here, clear bra on the bumper and the fenders. Um, yeah, it's not a fantastic job, but it's not terrible. Definitely better than not having it. Um, wheel, again, there's dirt, but no curb rat. Oh, that looks like a little scrape right here. And other than that, pretty much perfect condition. Same thing uh, with rear wheel. Bumper. Yeah, car's in good shape. Uh, and I expect it to be in good shape when it arrives as well. So the only thing, other thing that I wanted to show you is how the, uh, the top worked. So, um, you don't necessarily have to have the motor running when the top is off, but I'm always worried about battery drain, so I usually do, uh, I usually do uh, turn the car on when I'm uh, cycling the top. Um, cycling the top is fairly easy, so you just hold open, and away it goes. So it'll beep and you'll see roof open in the gauge cluster for a second when the uh, top is fully completed. Um, there's a couple of shortcuts. If you want to put the rear quarter windows up or all the windows up at one time, you can uh, basically double click the top open button and that will put the quarter windows up and the front windows up if they're not up. Um, also if you want to put all the windows down, you can double click the open button and then you don't have to hold it, it just drops all the windows down. Um, and then putting the top up, again, super simple. Hold this forward. You'll see roof closing in the gauge cluster and the top will close. Um, it uses the radar sensors to make sure that there's uh, nothing behind the car that the trunk will run into when you, uh, you open it up. And then when the windows are all shut, you'll see a uh, roof closed in the gate. Closet. But um, if you ever see um, an error, or an issue along the lines of uh, an obstruction or something like that, it'll tell you um, that the, there's so something too close to the trunk um, to flip the uh, trunk back. And in fact, my garage is too close to it. Don't have enough room to open it um, actually in the garage unless the garage doors open. Okay, um, I think that's everything that you, oh, one more thing. Uh, the steering wheel has a power adjustment here that goes uh, out, in, out, and then up and down. Um, and then you can save that position with the memory. Um, and the parking brake is here. Um, you can set uh, an auto hold here uh, with a button in front of it that will um, automatically apply the parking brake at a stop um, so you don't creep forward. Um, and then the parking brake uh, only has one way. You just pull it and look for it to say uh, park right here. Um, other than that, I think that should be everything you need to know. I uh, hope you really enjoy it.